Gurudev Gora Chandaya Radhika Tadali Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tadabhakta Namunama Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitya Nanda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sati Gaura Bhakta Dhamma Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo Ramo Sachinanan Gaur Hari Ki Jai By mercy of Gurudev and Vaishnavas Yesterday we were hearing this Sri Ramananda Roy Sambhad Sambhad means discussion Vada means theory So exchange of theories is called Sambhad So we heard main reason Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to South India was to meet Sri Ramananda Roy. Sabhabon Bhattacharya had told Lord Chaitanya, when you go there, you must meet him. That Sabhabon Bhattacharya said, at that time I could not understand his greatness, how he was Rasik. I just made fun of him because he was devoted, because he was Vaishnava. So Mapu came to South India, there we heard yesterday, he liberated Kurma Vipra and Basudev Vipra, who had leprosy. <laughs> so, then he came to the bank of the Godavari, one holy river in South India. As Mapu took bath, and he was sitting in one forest, can you hear? Everyone can hear? Then he saw Ramananda Roy coming, carried on a palanquin with 1,000 servants. Brahmanas chanting mantras, some musicians, some guards. Ramananda Roy saw this effulgent sannyasi, complexion like gold, cloth like rising sun, Arun Vasana. This sannyasi had a fulgent like a thousand suns. So he was did dandavas, like a stick. And Mahaprabhu said, are you Ramananda Roy? Yes. This is the Sudra Ramananda Roy, your servant. Well, Savabon Bhattacharya sent me here to meet you. Ramananda Roy said, I am the servant of Savabon Bhattacharya. So he always takes care of my good fortune. Ramananda Roy Mahaprabhu said, I want to hear topics of Krishna from you. Then Ramananda Roy said, no, I want to hear from you. Look, thousands of people are chanting, Krishna, Krishna. And you have embraced me. This is proof you must be Krishna or no one else. No one else has so much power and so much independence. <laughs> you must be Krishna. They both embraced and fell on the ground, weeping, shedding tears, changing complexion, hair standing on end. Both became like mad. Because both have eternal relationship. When they embraced that awoke. Yogamaya working. Sometimes Yogamaya covers things. For more astonishment, more rust. But seeing many, many non-devotees there, the Brahmanas. They were thinking this sannyasi is very high class. Why is he embracing this low class guy? Sudra. And Ramananda Roy is great pundit, very grave. Now he's become mad touching this sannyasi. What's going on? They were not devotees. Therefore, Mahaprabhu and Ramananda controlled themselves, and night time they met again in solitary place. <clears throat> Ramananda Roy came with one servant and he kept him a little distance. So, Prabhu Kohe Pana Shlok Sadhya Ninai. I want to hear some scriptural evidence. What is the goal of life? Without scripture, have no anything, have no basis, no foundation. 
to speak anything with some scripture, some proof. So Roy Kohe Sri Vanash Swadharma Acharan Vishnu Bhakti Hari. Swadharma Acharan Vishnu Bhakti. Vishnu is pleased when we follow Vanashram. Okay. Who knows? Anyone doesn't know what is Vanashram? <laughs> okay, Yamuna. Yes. Vanashram. Vanashram Dham. This is the system for the development of the individual and the development of society. Both should be there. How the society can develop and how the individual can develop within society. This is called Vanashram. So each individual has a particular nature. This is not the soul we are talking about. We are born with a material nature. This body, a particular body, a particular mind. Right? So because of our culture, because of association from parents, because of school system, different foodstuffs, born in different religions, individuals have developed certain mentality. Previous, a, previous life. Oh, yeah, previous lifetimes. In this life we are born with a particular mentality, a particular body, a particular tendency. These have nothing to do with the soul. So, but still, this can also be used in a favorable way for understanding the soul. So the first is called varuna. Varuna means four type of individuals, four type of swabhav. The Brahman swabhav, that means some people naturally inclined from birth towards religion, philosophy, worship, study. They have natural taste in that, they like. They feel happiness in that. And from, that is from birth. Something come from parents, something come from association, but something also come from previous life. Brahman Swabha. This is the caste system, they say, caste system. Some people naturally from birth have inclination of fighters, politicians, what else? Police, administrators, you know, some boys from birth, always shooting each other in the playground. <laughs> They like that. They love war, fighting. They can't wait. As soon as they get out of school, go straight in the army. They love it. They can't wait for war. They feel happiness in this. This is Chakyu's nature. Like describe these horrible wars in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Rivers of blood, <laughs> thousands of chopped hands and legs. People running around with no head and the blood spurting out. The chapters see that, they feel ecstasy, happiness. <laughs> no? If we feel disgust and fear, that means not, na not nature of chapter. <laughs> Prabhupada said that's why they lost America, lost the Vietnam War. Because you force people who have no interest in fighting, who fear it, hate it, you force them to fight, of course you're going to lose, <laughs> by conscription and others. Have, don't have that nature, you force them to fight, of course you will lose. So then there's the businessman. Ching -ching. They have so much interest in business, making, accumulating money, even farming, cow protection, all these things they like. And then there's the sudras, those who don't have interest in these others, they just want to work. Just work for others. So these four varnas. Right? This is for the development of the individual. Why the modern education system is a failure? Because they are forcing children to study something they have completely no interest in. Like in the school, right? In the high school, you got 30 kids there. 10 are clowns, 
through their upper back smoking cigarettes. <laughs> they are forced to study something they hate. They can't stand it. Therefore, they simply disturb those who want to study. The result is chaos. So the Vedic system, they look at the children, his nature, his parents, what he likes and what she likes. Then the parents discuss with the seniors, those who have experience, the gurus. And they can understand this child has nature of Brahman. So give him that type of education. At nine or ten they do this. Before education even starts. What this child likes. Then that child feels so much happiness in school because studying something they love. This child likes trades, working with their hand, giving that type of education. This child likes fighting, sticking with the, what do you call the cadets, the sea scouts, boy scouts. We, we were very happy there. Then he earns his living doing something he loves. He feels attachment. Right, the modern education system, after 12 years of study, what do you like? Don't know. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. So most people do a job they hate. Right? Most people are working in jobs they hate. You like your job, Radhika? Hate it. <laughs> and what a miserable life. You spend your whole life doing something you can't stand. You have no inclination to. You know, like, oh, you've got a high mark, become a doctor. Is that person have a nature to be a healer? Or just doing it for money? You've got a good mark, become a lawyer. Is that person interested in justice? No. That's why the medical profession and the legal profession fully corrupt. Because they're just doing it not for love, but for money. Horrible, messed up system. So this is for the development of the individual. Yeah. Then, the in development of society. You know, we should be a little controlled. Otherwise, we're like changos on the highway, changos and dogs, monkeys and dogs on the road. Therefore, for the protection of society, the proper development of the children, protection of the elderly, you know, happiness within marriage, all these things, for that reason, the system of ashram is given. First is like brahmachari. Right? That means celibacy. If you're going around having sex with everything, how are you going to concentrate on your studies? <laughs> uh, not good plan. <laughs> All brain is going there when it should be going here. So first stage is student life, celibate life. Then some people want to get married, they have some desire. They marry, no problem, but do properly. One man, one woman. Woman promises to serve husband, husband promises to protect and maintain. Then children born in a steady environment. So this is Varnashra. So Grihastha Ashram is next. Okay? But one should not be whole life in Grihastha Ashram. Sorry. After 50, should renounce. How do now? Illegal. <laughs> One should not stay in family life, whole life. Mm -hmm. Means when children have, like, what's the word? Children have their feet situated in their own business or their own means of earning a living. Children are like married and fixed, then no need to stay around, just doing grandchild Sarah. <laughs> no, no need that whole life. Okay, something will be there. We cannot just cut. But Vana Prast is the next stage. 50 to say 65, one eye on the children, one eye on spiritual life. You know, because you've also retired, so now you have free time, you have energy. <coughs> okay, Swanalata, <laughs> not just grandchild babysitting, no. Give more emphasis on spiritual life. And last, the final order, sannyas. Means Vanashram, husband and wife living together, but like friends, no more that other stuff. And sannyas means fully renounced. So this way, society is structured, and the, the within the society, the develop the individual also go up, also feel happiness. Okay. Unfortunately, even.
the West before had strong light Varnashram system, 100 years ago, even 50 years ago, but now all is chaos. Children don't know who is my father, who is my mother. Five, six divorces are there. And all society destroyed. Children confused, bewildered. No proper protection, no proper guidance. So society crumbles. No. Anyway. So, even all ancient cultures had some strength because they also follow some form of this Varnashram. What will happen to America in 50 years or 100 years? Who knows? Monkey-like platform. So, all this Varnashram have nothing to do with the soul. This is just for, what's the word? Material, material order, material regulation. So this should also be done, also all done for the satisfaction of Vishnu. By doing all this, Vishnu is happy, Vishnu is satisfied. This is goal of life. Sound good, Tejaswini? No. <laughs> Sounds good. It is good. And it's there in the scriptures. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejected. This is external. This is external. Speak something more. This is not goal of life. Even your perfect father, perfect son, perfect mother, perfect child, what else? Perfect grandchild, perfect grandfather. At the time of death, what benefit? You still have to die. And even you are perfect sannyasi, perfect brahmachari, perfect grihasta, but no relation with the soul, what's the benefit also? So not that we completely reject it, but in terms of spiritual life and the goal of life, it's considered external. Therefore Saraswati Thakur said, we cannot just give it up completely. Therefore, he introduced, not introduced, but he gave some emphasis to the idea of Devi Varnashram. Follow Varnashram, but the goal should be the satisfaction of Krishna. Like sannyas, this is also part of Varnashram. Brahmachari is also part of Varnashram. Grihastra is also part of Varnashram. So this should be done in a way which is favorable for devotion. Karuna, you should... Lalita, you should hear class because you're, only, you're leaving tomorrow, no? Try and hear class. Why is it Devi? Devi. Devi means divine, no? Mm -hmm. oh, is it feminine or just... No, no. Dave, not Devi, D-V-I, no, D-A-I-V, Devi. Oh. Like divine, my gosh. Okay, so, Prabhupada lamented at the end of his pastimes, oh, I wanted to implement this Varnashram, this strong understanding of Varnashram. But not so much time. And very hard because most people cannot follow. They don't understand. No sex before marriage. It's a rule. You can't follow. Once you're married, there's no such thing as divorce, but people not understand. So even many devotees, they come in this line, but cannot maintain it because no samskar, no proper understanding of the importance of it. Therefore, sad to say, but even Hare Krishna movement, so much chaos, so much disaster. So Mahaprabhu rejected it in the sense, in terms of the soul's final destination, there is nothing. They have no relation with the soul's eternal perfect status. But still we should follow. As long as we have a body, we have to follow some rules. Therefore, Madhusudu Maharaj often talks, there are general rules and higher rules, extraordinary rules. So the general people follow the general rules. But the special people follow special rules. So for Vaishnavas, no, they may or may not follow these general rules. Generally they do to give example, but some extraordinary persons can also step out of Varnashram completely, like Nityananda Prabhu, like Gokashodas Babaji Maharaj, like this. So, in Sri Sampradaya, they believe strongly in this idea of Varnashram pleases Vishnu. So when Mahaprabhu came to when Mahaprabhu came to Udupi, then at first they ignored him because they thought he was Mayavadis. 
then after they could understand he was devoted. So Mahaprabhu asked them, what is goal of life? They said, follow Vana Ashram and attain liberation. The goal is liberation. How you get liberation? By following Vana Ashram. Mahaprabhu said, that's rubbish. You know, the goal is Pramabhati. One achieves it by Shravan Kirtan. If one executes the prescribed duties of his social position, he awakens his original Krishna consciousness. So this was rejected by Mahaprabhu. Actually, many, that's why many people also bewildered. For example, there's a story in Mahabharata. For this reason, Vyasadev criticized, uh, Narad Muni criticized Vyasadev. You gave so many rules and regulations, and you just mislead the people. People think they cannot understand what is done. There's a story in the Mahabharata. There was a Brahmachari. Okay, try and stay away then. Stay away then. Narad, face Narad. Sit properly if you want to see. So one Brahmachari was doing meditation under a tree. And some bird <laughs> on the higher branch passed all on him. <laughs> the brahmachari became angry. He looked up and burnt the bird to ashes with his glance. Yesterday I was swimming and a bird passed all just missed me, but he was so sad and missed me. <laughs> so, the brahmachari then became very happy. Yamuna can hear, Yamuna? Can she hear, Raho? Okay. The Brahmachari became very proud. Now I'm great. I have some mystic power. So the Brahmachari went to collect some food to eat. They called Madhukara. And again and again, he knocked on the door of one lady. Oh, Baba Tim Bhiksham Dehi, Mother, give me donation. But the woman was not coming. Five minutes, seven minutes, ten minutes. Then she came, he opened the door and he was like trying to burn her to ashes by the glance. He said, I am not a bird in a tree that you will burn to ashes. <laughs> then the Brahmachari thought, my God, she's omniscient. I'm not omniscient. I can only burn chickens. I can burn birds, but I'm not omniscient. But she knows more than me. She's more powerful than me. So, he asked her, where you got your power from? She said, by serving my husband. By chastity to my husband, I become omniscient. And Brahmachari's head was spinning. I am celibate, but I don't have that power. Then she said, if you want to know the essence of religion, you go and meet Sadhan Kosai, one man in the town. So he went to the village, and he asked, where's Sadhan Kosai? Oh, you mean? Sadhan Kosai the butcher. Kosai means butcher. He had a butcher's shop. <laughs> Chicken, buffalo, what do you want? Iguana. Yes, I saw pet iguana yesterday, nice iguanas. In Guyana, they eat them. It tastes like chicken. I know it have them. <laughs> Costa Ricans do eat anything. So, then this brahmachari was shocked. This butcher, he knows all religion. How possible? He's there chopping up the meat and doing everything. Brahmachari's head is spinning. Then afterwards he asked, I was sent by the lady. Oh, yeah. But the lady who saw the burnt chicken. <laughs> then, oh, he's also omniscient. Yes, yes. So he sat on the side, took bath, washed, and gave some lecture. Huh? Sadhu Gosai took bath and then welcomed his guest, served his guest. He gave some lecture. Then the Brahmachari said, how you know everything about religion? Because I served my mother and father. I served my mother and father, therefore I know everything. But you have no mother and father. You left your mother and father, therefore you're bewildered. So Brahmachari thing. What should I do? He went back home and married so he could serve his mother and father. 
back and married. Yeah. Because the butcher said, this is in Mahabharata. It's the only person to read all this, then in your mind's going, what did I do? Why put on red cloth? <laughs> Mahabharata said I should marry. This is the Dharma. Then become confused. So for that reason, Mahapu rejected it. This is something. This is for human platform. And we see that's why in India, very easy for people to take up bhakti, because they have that foundation. They have that protection, that foundation, easy for them to understand. But Westerners come, no foundation, hard for them to practice. Cannot stay with one man, cannot stay with one woman, going, you know, new children from this wife, from this wife. It's difficult for them. So, anyway, for that reason, Mahapu said, yes, this has some position. We cannot ignore fully. As long as we have a body, we have to follow some rules, some regulations, otherwise we become like monkeys, monkeys and dogs. But this is the goal of life? No. Even you perfectly sannyas, perfect brahmachari, perfect housewife, that not give perfection. That gives security, you can go heavenly planets, but not more than that. For that reason, Mahapur said it's external. And Ramananda Roy quoted one verse. Vanashrama charavata purushena parapumam vishnu ararate pumsam nanya tattosha karanam. Okay? The Supreme Lord Vishnu is worshipped by the following of Varnashram. The execution of prescribed duties, right? For a woman, prescribed to serve her husband. For, you know, Brahmachari, something's prescribed. You know, for Varnapras, Sanyas, everyone has some prescribed duty. A Brahmin should do this. Right? A Brahmin should maintain their life by doing puja, teaching Veda, accepting donation, giving donation. A Brahmin can live like that. A Brahmin should never work for anyone. That is illegal. Okay. A Vaishya can earn money by cow protection, loaning money, business. But a Vaishya cannot beg. Illegal. So in India, so many Brahmanas having jobs and work. They are all fallen. These are all Sudras. As soon as you work for someone, you become a Sudra. What's your name? My name is Chakravati. What's your job, doctor? <laughs> That's Sudra. Doctor is actually a Sudra person. Everything destroyed in. Can you explain why, Huh? Can you explain why? A doctor? No, can you explain why if a brahmana works, they become a sudra? A brahmana, only six ways they can maintain their life. Well, I, I, I need to search up this. <laughs> How we can maintain our life. If you have a brahminical nature, why would you work for someone else? Because with brahminical nature, will be inclined towards puja. Worship, teaching. Okay. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught, but he never accepted wages. Right. Sorry. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a Brahmin. So a Brahmin can live by six ways. Teaching, being taught. Giving donation, accepting donation. Doing puja, Engaging others in puja. Six ways. Six ways a Brahmin can earn a living. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he's living by teaching. But he never accepted a wedge. People would give some donation. People would give some donation to Lord Chaitanya for teaching, but he never charged money. <laughs> he would get charity and he would distribute charity. This is how Brahman should live. But as soon as a Brahman works for someone else, they become fallen. Now they become sudras. Just working for someone else. Anyway, who can follow all this? Gorgamaj used to say, any of my disciples who has a job after initiation is an atheist. Because you should have full faith by the one who will maintain you. 
his high standard or Even something. Even your house stutter? Did I stutter? Was it something like this? <laughs> so anyway. So Brahman can earn, like a chatri can earn money by fighting. But a chatri can never accept a donation. Because only a Brahmin can accept donation. Right? So when the five pun well work. So by doing Vanashram, Vishnu is satisfied, that's the goal of life. But Mapa rejected. This is external. If there's anything more, this has some, some truth is there. But Mahaprabhu taught us, we are not, the soul has no relation with this action. Nam vipro na cha na rapiti na pivaishana sudro na hambanam na cha griha puni na vanastu kitirva. Mahaprabhu said, who are you? Mahaprabhu said, I am not Vanapras, Chatya, Vaishya, Sudra, Sanyas, Brahmachari, Vanapras, nothing. Who are you? I am the maid servant of the lo I am the servant, maid servant of the beloved of the gopis. I am the maid servant of Krishna. So this is external, Mahapur said. Can you speak something more? Raya Koye Krishna Karma Pan Sarva Sadyahoy. To offer all your Vanashram to Bhagavan, this is the goal of it. Say again, sorry. To offer your all Vanashram to Bhagavan, this is the goal of life. The first was just doing Vanashram and not offering to Bhagavan, no relation with Bhagavan. Just being sannyas, just being brahmachari, just being grihasa, but no relation with Bhagavan. Right? Like your parents. <laughs> right? They're doing everything properly, but Bhagavan, Shmagavan, no relation. So the second is considered higher, because you're doing everything and offering to Bhagavan. So this, this is like Daivi Vanashram? Um, Daivi Vanashram. No? Karma Pan Bhakti. Karma Mishra Bhakti, this is also called. You're doing your karma, your Vanasha means karma. You're doing, but you're offering to Bhagavan. No? Like in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Yad Korosi, Yadasna, Sarsi, Yad Korosi, Yadasna, Yad Jahosi, Dadas, Yad, Yadta Paswasi Kuntiya, Yad Korosa Madarpanam. Krishna says, Arjuna, whatever you eat, Asnasi. Yad Johosi, whatever you offer, whatever donation you give. Yad Johosi, Yad Asna, Yad Johosi, the Das, Yad, whatever austerities you perform. Whatever karma do you have, Kurusa, Madhapan, whatever you do, offer to me. This is called Karma Mishrabhakti. Okay, be Grihasta, be Vasta. Brahmachari, but offer the result to Bhagavan. Don't try and enjoy the result. <laughs> Following Vanashram without devotion, this cannot give any proper eternal result. Okay, so performing all activities as an offering to Bhagavan, this is called Karma Mishra Bhakti. Performing all your activities in relation to Krishna, this is called Karma Mishra Bhakti. Krishna speaks this in Bhagavad Gita. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said this is also external. <laughs> Even Krishna spoke it in Bhagavad Gita, but Krishna in the form of Mahaprabhu said no. False. External. Why? Because it's, this is called karma mishra bhakti. Karma means you do what you want. And then you offer to Bhagavan. Right? Does Bhagawan eat tamales? Oh, come. Is there a Mexican Krishna there who's eating tamales in Golok Vrindavan? Don't mind. This is the question. Right? Is there an Italian Krishna eating pizza somewhere in a special precaution of Golok Vrindavan? Is there a spaghetti Krishna? What? What? I'm just asking a question. Is there a Mexican king? Is Krishna a Mexican king? Does Madhya Soda make tamales and pizza for Krishna? No. Actually, I like, don't get me wrong. Yeah, no one ever offer Mara's pizza or tamales. I'm not complaining about the tamales. I'm very happy. French fries, tamales, pizza, every day. 
twice a day. But, question. Does Krishna eat tamales and pizza? Does he like? Have we heard? Bajobaka tabat salya shri gora hari tamale pizza debit. I like pizza, I'm making pizza, and I'm offering that pizza to Bhagawan whether he likes it or not. Take it. There's a Tulsi. Ding, ding, ding. This is called Karma Mishra Bhakti. Karotuma. I am doing. I like. I want. But, ding, 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 ding. After I enjoy it, I offer it to Bhagawan. So this is called Karma Mishra. Right, so karma mission means that there's a pre predominance of your own desire. I want this. And to purify it, I'm offering it to Krishna. Okay. Karma yoga. Karma yoga. This is karma yoga. Krishna discusses it in Bhagavad Gita. Whatever you eat, whatever sacrifice you perform, whatever charity you do, whatever you do, yad kuroso madarpanam. Offer to me. But still there's so much predominance of what you like. I like this. And I'm offering it to Krishna. But what does Krishna like? <laughs> Who cares? I'm offering what I like. Right? This is good. Right? This is one level. And Krishna speaks it in Bhagavad Gita. Actually, this is Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was bewildered. What should I do? Should I fight? How can I fight? There's my grandfather, my cousin brothers, my friends, uncles. What else was there? Guru, even his own guru was on the other side. How can I fight? I will enjoy the kingdom covered in the blood of my relatives. Better I maintain my life by begging him. I will not fight. And he become bewildered. What should I do, Krishna? So Krishna explained this science of karma and bhakti. That is Bhagavad Gita. First, Krishna said, number one, you cannot kill anyone. <laughs> yes, Bhagavad Gita. Krishna convincing Arjuna to kill his relative. <laughs> Krishna explained first, you cannot kill anyone. The soul is not the doer. Who is chopping off head? Not the soul, only the body. Who is having head cut off? The soul? Just the body. Soul never kills, soul is not killed. Soul is not the doer. Uh, can I say a little something about when you're speaking that Krishna, and there, if there is a Mexican Krishna, because Prabhupada says different than the Bible comes. Because uh, said there's a Mexican canto uh -huh. where he says, uh, I'm, I'm pouring right now. Uh -huh. He says, uh, and not only must one chant, but he should also offer whatever food stuff is available in his part of the world according to time and convenience. No problem. But does Maria Soto offer to Krishna? No. In Goloka Vrindavan, there's no pizza tamales. How, is that true then? Because if, if Radharani is always cooking something different, wouldn't at no, some no, point no, there be a... <laughs> no, it's just like it makes sense if Krishna has infinite expansion and, and, and they make everything possible and something yeah, different no, every day. That's how? How? No, that's Why? how do you know that? How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I reject that notion. So this is okay, right? Whatever... Krishna says, whatever you eat, offer to me. But this is still, predominance of karma is still there. Because still you're offering actually what you like and what's easily available for you. But what if, if you like samosa, then it's the same. It's the same. If, if, if one Indian devotee, she prefers to convert samosa, pakora, yes. and he offers back to Krishna. But as far as I am the same prophet, it's obviously bhakti. But you know the difference if you are trying to uh, satisfy the Lord, or your own tongue, even if you see Indian food or Mexican food, it's the same. Okay. The principle is to offer it. You can accept that, but still the point is we should offer what Krishna likes. Yeah. Krishna says, no, in Gita, those who are satisfied with whatever, they come to them, they are very dear to me. So if pizza comes automatically, I'm not objective. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, 
But Mahaprabhu likes that thing we should offer to him. So Mahaprabhu has his likes. If you read Chaitanya Chattamrita, it's full of what preparations Mahaprabhu likes. And pizza and tamales was not mentioned there. That's why this karma mission bhakti is acceptable. It's there in Shastra. Krishna spoken. But that is the goal of life? No. It's not, Vanasham is not rejectable. It's not wrong. Karma, karma mission bhakti is not wrong. The goal of life? No. This is Bhagavad Gita, right? Krishna explained first, no one kills anyone. Second, no one can be without activity even for a minute. No. So even if you renounce and go to the forest, I do know, still you will be thinking of fighting because you have a nature. So better to act according to one's nature than perform the dharma of someone else. There's a dharma of Brahman to renounce everything, go to the former forest. This is Brahminical nature. And you are not that nature, you are chapter by nature. So better act according to your own nature. Fight, but offer the result to you. So this is karma, mishra, bhakti. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Arjuna heard Bhagavad Gita. And Arjuna decided to fight for Krishna. But if Krishna had spoken the same Bhagavad Gita to Uddhav, Uddhav would have renounced everything and gone to the forest. <laughs> because these two are the same. Renouncing, we'll get to this point. No need to jump to that. But following all Varnashram and offering to Bhagavan and renouncing all Varnashram and going to Bhagavan is the same thing. No? This is karma, karma, arpan bhakti, karma, mishra, bhakti. It's bhakti but mixed with own desire. I want to get married. <laughs> Does Bhagavan want you to get married? Who cares? I'm going to do it. Right? Like this. I don't want to take sannyas, but Guru wants. What should you do? Do it or not do it? So anyway, karma, mishra, bhakti. This is one stage. And this is Bhagavad Gita. Krishna recommend this to Arjuna. This is safe part. Making tamales and offering this is the safe part. <laughs> or samosas. Don't worry, we have had these arguments before. Before I, not, I used to not like puff rice. I used to hate it actually. But they would give every morning for breakfast. So I wanted to make a little revolution. <laughs> Then did he become very angry? No, this very dear to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and you don't like it? This is not good. No? Then I started developing happiness for Muni. It was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu life. No? Like Sukta, one bitter preparation. It's not so great actually. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu life, therefore we also respect it and take it happily. Sark, maybe people don't like Sark. But Krishna too much, Mahaprabhu too much like this. So we take also happily. Okay, so karma. Guru Maharaj give an example. There's a guy. He's got a farm. He's growing spinach, growing cabbage, growing potatoes, growing chilies. Right? And everything in the garden he's growing. He's, he's chopping up and everything from the garden he's offering to Bhagavan. Is this Bhakti Tejaswani? No. No. Guru Mahārāj says, don't do it. Because you have not offered yourself to Bhagavan. You are just offering these other things. For that reason, because you have not offered yourself, you are just offering items, which you like anyway. <laughs> For that reason, it's not called pure bhakti. <coughs> like Trivikra Mahārāj said, Imagine you cook something and you offer to Bhagavan and you go to get the offering and it's all gone. Would you be happy or sad? <laughs> <laughs> if you're happy, if you're happy, you've cooked for Bhagavan and offered him and there's nothing left for you, but you're still happy, that means you cooked for Krishna. That is the test. So anyway, karma, uh, you understand Yamuna? Okay.
So because you are just offering ingredients, but not offering yourself, you are doing what you want and offering to Bhagavan, but not doing directly what Bhagavan wants. For that reason, it's a type of devotion, but not pure devotion. Not goal of life. Like Krishna went to Mathura. Some say he stayed in Dwarka for a hundred years. Some say Krishna stayed in Dwarka for a hundred years. But not one time the gopis demanded Krishna to return. If he is happy there, let him be happy. We not make the man come back here and be unhappy with us. That is of course the ultimate idea of pure bhakti. What Krishna wants, if Krishna is happy there, let him stay there and be happy. That is Radharani's mood. No? If Krishna is happy by embracing others, even before me, if Krishna is happy kicking me, rejecting me, Asli Sabha Panadopanashtumam, if Krishna is happy grinding me under his feet, if Krishna is happy rejecting me, if Krishna is happy embracing others before me, I am happy by that. What makes him happy, I am ready. I want that seva. That is the highest thing. So, to offer everything in Vanash, to do Vanashram, external. To do Vanashram and offer everything to Bhagavan, which is a pretty high level, I would think. External. So, is there anything more? So we'll do one. Yes. Swadharma tyag e sadhyasa. To reject Vanashram completely, this is the essence of religion. <laughs> to follow Vanashram, that's the essence. <laughs> to do an ayah Vanashram and offer everything, because doing Vanashram is external. So to offer external things is also external. So maybe giving up all external things, this is the essence of religion. No. <laughs> this is also external. Rejecting completely all material things, all vanashram, all material identity, this is also external. So Ramananda recorded a verse of Bhagavad Gita. That's why Bhagavad Gita, most people read, become bewildered. Krishna says, Agyayavam gunando samaya distama pisakam dharma samtyaga yasarvam yakoroti mabhajan sachutama. Krishna says, Understanding all vanashram, there's some imperfection there. Right? What's the use of being the perfect chaste housewife? All Vanashram, if you look, if there's some perfection there. Imperfection there. So, for example, what's the use in being the perfect chaste housewife? Still have to die. You want to give the eye? What's the use in being the perfect chaste sannyasi? Still have to die. Right? Everyone's happy now. What's the use in being the perfect Grihastha? I cannot take that with me at the time of death. All these happy thoughts <laughs> produce a feeling of detachment. I'm not the body. If I'm not the body, what relation do I have with all of these activities? No relation. So I'll give it up. Krishna says, examining the fault of everything, one who renounces everything, for my bhajan, he's number one, he's the best. Sound good? What I need? Giving up all types of religious and occupational duties. By analyzing everything, there's a fault in everything. What's perfect in this world? Nothing. He can fully understand the benefits and the losses in doing everything. If you're a brahmachari, then you also lose something, right? You can't have children. Right? If you have a, 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 a virgin girl, a daughter who's a virgin, you give her in charity and marriage, you go to heavenly planets. 
That's what they call, what's it called? When they marry in India, they call Kanyadan. The father donates his virgin daughter as charity, gives in charity. If he, give, he gives his, cha his pure daughter in charity, he goes to heaven immediately. He, the father. Why do you think they take marriage so seriously? And a daughter's doing nonsense before marriage, who goes to hell, Rahul? If the daughter's doing rubbish before marriage, who goes to hell? Father. Father goes to hell, it's his fault. Because he not arranged properly the daughter of his marriage, he goes to hell. You don't believe it? Believe it. Prabhupada, right? Prabhupada, his wife. Prabhupada had a young daughter. So in Bengal, they, before the daughter has her menstruation, she should be married. First marriage is when the children are very young. Bhakti Murtako was married when he was five. No, no. Okay, hang on, just wait. No, don't, inv don't interrupt. We're in a roll. Turn off the, turn off the internet. How old was Bhakti Murtako when he married? Five years old. But Prabhupada talks so much about all this. We don't take it seriously, we don't understand. It, because no background. Then the girl thinks, this is my husband, the boy thinks, this is my wife. But they're not doing anything, right? Just feeling as that. Back to Nautica. When he was married at five, I think he was like 11 and she was five. He said, this is like a doll's marriage, he said. About himself. A doll's marriage. My children marry dolls. It was like that. Because... Children don't know I'm a boy or a girl. No feelings, right? But they are in each, each other house, no? Then when they become... That's right. Tranquilo. <laughs> <laughs> the feeling is the girl feels this is my husband. And guy feels the boy feels this is my wife. But still they're living in their own parents' home. And afterwards it's second marriage when they do properly. Like Mother Sudha Maharaj, his marriage was arranged. He was 10 years old. Marriage. He escaped. Before, <laughs> before the marriage was done, he ran. But that's how serious. Then that village came to kill his parents because there's so much disrespect. This is Vedic culture, so strong. They thought, oh, anyway, don't worry, forget that. This is Vedic culture. So, but Prabhupada had a daughter. She was 11 years old. He hadn't arranged the marriage. And Prabhupada's wife said, if she's not married by the time she has her menstruation, I'm going to drink poison and kill myself. Wife said, and Prabhupada had to arrange, no, because wife was dead serious. This is Vanasha. Very attractive. Huh? Very attractive. Very attractive. Yes. How many girlfriends you've had? Hundreds. That's why we can't perform bhajan properly. Don't understand all these things. Yeah. When Prabhupada was married, his wife was 11 years old. So, anyway, what I'm getting is I have no idea. But if you examine it all, there's a fault there also. Right? If you examine everything, there's a fault. So one who gives it all up for bhajan, that's the best. Yeah. And that's the final... Right? That's the final conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. Ah, so the point I was making, right? A brahmacharya would think, oh no, if I don't marry, I can't have a daughter, I can't give her a charity, I can't go to heaven. A brahmachari is a fault. Everything has some fault. If I take sannyas and give up my wife and the service of mother and father, this is also a fault. So if I marry is a fault, if I don't marry is a fault. <laughs> I'd like the brahmachari, the story of the bird passing on his head. If I stay brahmachari, fault. If I give up brahmachari and marry, that's also a fault. So everything have a fault, the game of the day, everything. Where can you find a perfect wife? No exister. Where's the perfect husband? <laughs> no exister. Krishna says, if you look at everything, Everything has some good and some bad. Right? So who gives up everything to render service to Bhagawan exclusively, that's the best. 
And Krishna gives that a conclusion in Bhagavad Gita. Sarva Dharma Pritija Mami Kam Saranam Braja Ham Tam Sava Papi Vyo Makshisyami Masacha. One who gives up all varieties of religion and dharma and comes to me. I will protect you, Arjun. Don't worry. This is the final conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. Sound good, Tejaswini? Well, what's the qualification between I'm doing Varanashtam and offering it versus I'm renouncing everything? The results the same. But what's the qualification for me to renounce? Can I tomorrow renounce everything? If you have taste in Harikata? Oh, yeah, so if I'm still thinking about like, money and enjoyment, then I'm not qualified to renounce. Yes, you should stay Grihastra Ashram forever and make no effort to come out of it. No, I'm, I'm trying to develop a taste. That's, that's what qualification is what you are doing? Both have qualification. Udav had one qualification. I do not another qualification. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, if you renounce everything but still meditate on enjoyment, then you are a pretender and you are worse than yes. like, well, That's why I do not chose that path. But Uda wouldn't have chosen that. Everything depends on qualification. At the end of the day, they both come to the same point. Right? Performing all activities off into Bhagavan and giving up all activities off into Bhagavan, the point is the same. Right? So Krishna says, I forget the verse, but Krishna talks about hmm? Sankhi Yoga and Karma Yoga are the same. Who says different is foolish. Krishna is saying Bhagavad Gita. God, what a violent class. Ready for Peru? Yes. <laughs> yes this old Varnashram is a very strong thing. No? Very strong thing. We are outsiders. We are called Antages, outsiders. What are they call? Malachas, Antages. Who is born outside the Varnashram can't understand Varnashram because no qualification, not born in. This is a position. Yes. Maharaj, um, just going back to what you were saying about the the caste, not the Varnashram system of women, women being married young or young girls being, being married. I read that it was from the Manu Samhita, and the Manu Samhita yes. is. Um, it was written during a time where they were invading India a lot. It was written by Manu Maharaj in the beginning of creation. But is that where it sp talks about that? But the young daughters? Because it always, when I was looking historically, it was more like they started to marry them Ra younger and younger. How old was Radharani when she married? Huh? How old was Radharani when she married? Eight years old? Eight? Maybe less. So it was, it was all married copies were made very young. Young girls and young boys. Not all the boys. Not that many boys. Young boys and young girls. Now is now is Kali Yuga, so the standard is not there for all this proper protection. It was a scientific thing. Now people marry, but they don't look at the astrology charts. Therefore, incompatible marriage, because it's just I love you, I love you, marriage. But no compatibility, therefore the marriages are a disaster. There's no backing of the parents because the, they just go and live off by themselves. Yes, sir. Also, when you just said that Kali Yuga is very prevalent, Varnashram is thoroughly joined and debated by Kali Yuga. 100%. 100%. Who can follow which Brahmachari is following properly or Sanyas or Guyasta? Very rare, very difficult thing. That's why I should not give too much emphasis to it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. But if you think I don't have to follow any of this because I'm chanting Hare Nam, then it can become Nama Pura. Ah, Mahapur said external, don't worry about it. Then also can be, fault is there. Anyway, Krishna finally says, give up everything, surrender to me. Sound good? Huh? <laughs> I mean, there is more. Still, you have to come to the point of full surrender. You can't sidestep that one. <laughs> I'm coming, Gopi. I avoided the whole Saranagata thing. <laughs> so, Krishna's final instruction in Bhagavad Gita, the essence. Huh? Krishna gives many instructions. Durai, <laughs> Durai, you're looking shell shocked. Wait till tonight's class. 
is to give many levels of instruction. But the final level, that is the conclusion. Gorgamar said he never even met his wife before marriage. The curtain went down. <laughs> <laughs> but still, they follow because that, is, that impression is there of Dharma. I have to do this. This is my Dharma. So like or not like, they maintain they can do it. They have that impression. That nishta. It's difficult, no doubt. What the women have to tell it depends on your karma. You get a good husband, a bad husband, a good wife or a bad wife. Many husbands, you think they're all happy with their wives? Even Prabhupada didn't like his wife, right? Didn't like her. She was ugly, didn't like her. He said to his father. And bad character too. I don't know about that. I mean, I mean, I don't know your idea of that. She said that she was going to sell his Chaitanya 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 Papa didn't like his wife. She was ugly. <laughs> he said to his father, I want to marry again, means two wives. Father said, stick with the ugly wife. Then you can renounce easier. And Papa's marriage was not happy. He didn't have a happy marriage. But they have that stick with it. But some scar come from many generations. Qualification changes by association also. Like we see Indians, Prabhupada, when they come here, they're like pigs, which no Indians do. Turn off the internet. Prabhupada said, Prabhupada criticized a lot the Indians who came to America. A lot. The river. Then he swims the river to get all the fresh stool on the other side. Prabhupada talked about that. The Indians who leave India and go to the West just for some money. Prabhupada talked a lot about it. What a violent class. <laughs> what was all the point of all this? Because right, they're giving up Varnashram, they're going there to a godless place. No religion, nothing, just for this. Prabhupada talked a lot against. That's why it said someone who cross, who from India who crosses the ocean lose their caste. But Bhakti Nautakon says, but some exception is it. They're going for religion or they're going for protection of Unfortunate standards are up. That's why Bhakti Lord Thakur said Westerners have to take seven births. Maybe he's reminding us of that constantly. Still, you fully surrender, you cross a few more lives. It can be crossed. So, fully surrender to Krishna, understanding everything as a fault, who gives up everything and fully surrenders to Krishna. Mahaprabhu said that is also external. <laughs> what a high standard. Give up everything to I am. Surrender to Bhagawan. And it's still not good enough. <laughs> Might as well not try, right? Actually I think that's why Didi not recommend West, not recommends people to take to get married so much. Because the Westerners can't do it properly. Most you see most old Devotees, Prabhupada and stuff, they've all had two marriages, three marriages, four marriages. They can't do it. Because it needs so much maturity to be married and stick with one husband and one wife. It needs so much maturity, not so much control of the mind and senses. And most people just so much tolerance. <laughs> most people are not mature enough for the Grihastra Ashram. That's what Didi said. And you see, all those people Didi said, don't do it. Their marriage is a disaster. They can see something, this person. But then what option is there? Yeah. Stay with that man. <laughs> <laughs> Just have boyfriends and girlfriends, that's the option. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, that is what Don't practically happens, though. Like but samskar can change if we listen to the words of Guru and Vaishnav. They can give us new samskar if we follow their instruction. Mm. They have power. If we doubt their power, then we're lost. Mm. can change. Samskar can change by new samskar. Guru Vaishnava give new samskar, new impression. Actually, I read in Jayavidama, Bhakti Nautakur says, Satsanga does what? It just removes the rubbish. That's all. 
and then a good thing comes. Bhaktivinoda said, Sadhu Sang doesn't give samskar. It just removes the bad samskar. I want to get married? Don't do it. Remove the samskar. <laughs> if you believe like that, if you have faith, if you have faith, anything can change. Any samskar can change. So anyway, surrender everything. Give up all material desires. Surrender fully Bhagavan. It's still external. <laughs> but, but these samskaras take a long time until you... The Bhakti samskara is already there, no? Sarup is there. Mm. No one has to give samskara to the Sarup. Mm. The Sadhusang remove all these other false samskaras we put. But and when that's clear, then the original samskara comes. But, but this takes time, no? Does it? Yes. Fully surrender. It takes one second. <laughs> that's the power of surrender. By full surrender, all this can come in a moment. But, but if you have samskara, if you have no samskara, then... Then difficult. No? That's why I would have had thousand disciples. Where are they? Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it was good at giving such a high thing, but no samskara to take. Many stories like that. Anyway, fun times. Everyone feel enthused? <laughs> to go to the beach, yes. <laughs> But it was. In a thousand years, you'd give Didi, I give you a million dollars, go to the beach, would she go? Mm -hmm. You've got different life, different sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went to that story. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brahma, Bhuta, Prashanatma. So even full surrender to Bhagavan, giving up all material aspirations. This is also external. Why? Because you still haven't began to serve him. You've only given up external, but you haven't began the... You've given up the negative, but you have not began the positive. You've given up all material identity, material, material relation, material activities. You surrender to Bhagwan. You have not began the activities of the devotion. You have not begun to serve Krishna. I surrender to Krishna, I surrender to you. Okay, give me a glass of water. I can't, I'm surrendered to you. Okay, do something. I fully surrender. <laughs> Get the point? Surrender to Bhagavan, but still, you're in a, like a neutral stage. Full surrender, but you have not begun devotion. For that reason, it's still considered But you still have to open the door and go in. The full little six limbs of surrender, <coughs> these have no connection with the limbs of bhakti. So for that reason, it's still considered external. Everyone depressed? Yeah. <laughs> this is Chaitanya Charitamrita. What other sampradaya I cannot even imagine in dream? The highest essence of Bhagavad Gita, rejected, external. Krishna rejecting his own previous instructions. <laughs> That's why Chaitanya Charamrita is so high. Prabhupada said, Chaitanya Charamrita like PhD. Bhagavad Gita like primary school. Bhagavatam like high school. University. University. But Chaitanya Charamrita is PhD. So, Guru Maharaj would say, read Chaitanya first, Chaitanya Chaitanya read it first. <laughs> then you automatically get the result of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam there. <laughs> if, said, if you read Bhagavatam but don't read Chaitanya Chaitanya still you cannot understand the Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Other sampradayas also studying Bhagavatam. Their understanding is not the same like Gaudiya Sampradaya. Any questions from the people? You're looking shell shocked. <laughs> and, uh, yes, it's not easy thing. No? Not easy thing. Not easy thing.